Hey guys, this is Tash, the Starcross Stitcher. Sorry, just scratching my foot. I should be more prepared and scratch myself before the video starts. How are you all going? I know it's been a really long time since my last video. I um, I don't know. It's work has been not not crazy busy, especially, but I've just been so tired after work, and it's been kind of hard for me to find time to film. The only reason I can film today, Tim is actually home at the moment, but I can feel safe filming because I have my own room now for stitching. I can actually shut the door. He's out there playing his games. He's too busy. He's too preoccupied to care what I'm doing in here. So I'm filming even though he's home. So this is my stitching room, guys. Um, it's not really my stitching room. Oh, there's still some junk on the floor. Um, I just set this room up yesterday. Um, there's my Chinese cupboard. That's not full of stitching stuff. Here is my big desk. All the cupboards and drawers are full of stitchy stuff. Um, I might show you. See my heaven and earth there? My tiny little quick stitch. Um, there's some whips and UFOs in there. There's some finishing supplies. Bobbins and supplies and stuff. More UFOs. No, more whips in here. Crazy, right? All of these things down here are also whips. Um, or empty bags. I have way too many whips. I need to get it under control. Uh, I've got extra needles and pins and tools and stuff in there. And this one is... Uh, oh, I think this one's just bags and business cards and websites that I need to go to and stuff. I'm watching Flosstube. Hi, Teresa. Uh, that's my stitch diary so I can remember, remember what I need to talk to you about. I'm currently set up because I'm in the middle of stitching um, Firefly Fairies, obviously. So I've got my chart and stuff in there. And some threads here. Some little toys over there. Where's my companion cube? There it is. Um, in here I've got... Oh, this is some spare fabric and some... Um, some whips and in here are some finishes that are all rolled up. Got some tatting stuff under there. Uh, down here is all my kits. You can see all the small ones in the front and in the back behind them there's more. Um, yeah, there's a lot of kits in there. I love kits. Because um, they're, you know, they're a really cheap way if you're ordering from overseas to get everything you need. Um, oh, in this middle part here is just some like framing supplies and stuff. Ugh. Uh, in this drawer is all my Q-snaps and hoops, uh, all my fabric. I have quite a lot of fabric. That drawer is really deep, um, but I none of it's like labeled. I don't know what count it is and what size it is, what color it is, so that's some organizing I need to do. Over here in the cupboard I've got two of these IKEA things. This one is all full of all my threads and this one is all full of all my charts. There's a lot... Oh, sorry. Hope you're not getting too dizzy. Yeah, there's a lot of charts in there. I discovered I have a few duplicates. You can see that castle sampler. There's a few Teresa Wenslers. I have a duplicate heaven and earth design. Um, that's what I'm going to show you a bit later on today in the video. <laughs> there's my Firefly Fairies whip. Um, yeah, so this is my stitching room. Now let's get on with the rest of the video. Oh, up there, this is a doll that my grandma made me. Well, actually, she, she just made it. She makes lots of dolls. But she gave me this one when I said I really love it. And this is a piggy that I love. And it goes... <laughs> and it makes me giggle uncontrollably. Okay, guys, some books. Um... Yeah, that's all I have to show you for now. Oh yeah, no, I have a whole video to show you. Never mind. Back to the video. I hope he doesn't walk in. Um, but hi, how are you going? Um, yeah, so I, even though it's been like almost a month since I spoke to you last, I actually don't have that much progress to show you. <laughs> um, yeah, as I said, I've just been, I haven't been sick, but when I've been getting home from work, I've just been exhausted, and for some reason, I don't want to um, do any stitching when I get home. I've been kind of falling asleep at like 9pm, which 
It's ridiculous, right? 9 p.m.? That's crazy. So, yeah, I don't know why that is. But kind of in the second half of this week, I've got some energy back, so that's good. I've got some stuff done. Um, I do have a few things to show you. I have a lot of haul to show you because I bought a lot of stuff in January and it's all arrived um, in the last couple of weeks, which is super fun. And I actually have did buy a lot of stuff in February that's coming pretty soon as well. Um, <laughs> and it's payday again on Wednesday and I'm planning to buy some stuff, which will come in a few weeks after that. Um, I'm gonna... I'm not sure if I like the angle we're filming at because I'm right in front of the window. The, the light's straight on my face. I don't know if it's good and I don't know if you'll be able to see the fabrics I'm gonna hold up and show you. So we might have to move. Um, We'll see. Okay, let's, I'll just um, get on and show you the progress I've made. So, on the 17th of February, I made a new start uh, for the year of starts. And if you remember, I was asking you if you thought that a section on a round robin counted as a start. And everyone said yes, and I asked in the Mania group too, and everyone there said yes as well. So, that's what I did. I made a start, and I finished it already, on this block, on the Heaven and Earth Designs round robin. This is my round robin. Um, it came back to me. And now the whole thing is finished. Ta-da! I'm so pleased with it. I love it. It's so pretty, right? Um, I'd love to give you a bit more of a close-up of... Sorry. I'm trying to watch in the mirror what's happening. Um, this is my favourite block. God, I love this block. It's so cute. The weird little dwarf. Uh, a lot of these charts are Selena Fennec charts, as you probably recognise. Um, because when you look at black and white charts, there isn't that much choice, and Selena has done so many. So, yeah, there's my finish. I'm really happy with it. I have no idea how I'm going to finish it. Because <sighs> it's such a weird shape, I don't think I'll find a frame to fit it. Um, thinking I might sort of finish it as a band on the bottom of a big bag. Like a whip bag. You know, put this on the band on the bottom and then pull my big whip out of the back. <laughs> um, it's really pretty, I love it. I'm really happy with it. Thank you so much to all the girls who stitched on it. It was a long time ago. I have yet to see any of you on um, on any of the Facebook groups or on FlossTube or anything. So I, I don't know. It's funny how you used to have stitchy friends and then 10 years pass and they're all gone. It's weird. Um, the thing I did spend most of my time stitching on was actually I started a new round robin. Um, the people and it's on the um, there's a Facebook group called Round Robin Cross Stitch, and we were each put into groups of four, and for some reason they want to geographically lock it, so instead of giving us a fourth person, they said, well, we'll just keep you in Australia with other Australian people, and we'll you'll only have three, so that kind of sucked actually, but I like the Round Robin anyway. Um, it's nice. I chose an interesting piece. I'll talk about it in a minute. Oh, I think I showed you last time, didn't I? I was doing the the Quaker's Dozen, um, Long Dog Sampler's Quaker's Dozen, and it's got 12 parts, and I thought, I'll send it on this round robin, the first three parts will get stitched, and then I'll just participate in another one, and more parts will get stitched. I really hope it gets to go outside of Australia, though, because I want it to go all around the world, and I don't want it to be stuck just in Australia, because the organiser of the round robin thinks that Australians only want to talk to other Australians. Um, it's fine. I'll just choose a different group next time, maybe. The, the people I'm stitching with are great. So I finished my square on the Quaker's Dozen round robin. I'll put a photo of it here so you can see what it looks like. Um, the thread is DMC... Ooh, I think it's 4025. I'm not sure, though. Sorry, I'm really not sure. Um, but I'll... I'll, um have to figure it out. Uh, I'll, I'll like write it on the screen. I think it's 4025. Um, but it's pretty, right? I like my square. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Uh, hang on, I'm, I'm just trying to get organized. Right. Throwing stuff on the floor after I've shown you so I don't get confused. So I sent that off to Coral and I received Stella's round robin in the mail. And well, first of all, she's, she was so cute. She sent me um, a little card she had made. Yeah, it is quite glary with the window there. I hope you can... Little card she made. Isn't that adorable? She wrote me a nice little message inside. So cute. This must have taken, you know, a few hours of stitching. It's really nice. I would love to do this to make things to send with my round robin, but 
for this one I didn't have time. I was kind of disorganized. I was lucky to get all the borders done after I finished my block. But isn't that adorable? It's so cute. I really love it. Actually, I should put it up there. I will. I'll put it up there in a minute after this video. Um, so for Stella's Round Robin, she is doing uh, Four Seasons. I don't have any information about it. It's from a magazine. She's given us a photocopy of the pattern. Um, I don't know what magazine it is. don't know what issue. I don't know who designed it. I don't know anything. But this is it. And it's really cute. This is not the kind of thing I would usually stitch. Mm -mm. Um, it looks really cute though. I really like it. S uh, Stella did spring before it got to me. Can you see the eight is like opalescent? It's pretty cool. Um, but it's weird opalescent. It's like, it's almost like sprayed on. The other side isn't opalescent at all. This side is sparkly and it's almost like a film, like a gluey film on top of the Ada. It's really strange. Um, I did Summer. So cute! Actually, it was super annoying to stitch. Do you know there are six shades of blue in this tiny thing? It's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> it was annoying to stitch, but it turns out really cute, doesn't it? Um, and then because the round robin was planned for four people, and then it turned out there were only three participants from Australia, uh, so we each decided that the people who have a four-part round robin, um, we'd each just stitch a part of a fourth part. The other two people would stitch half of the fourth part, so that when the original person gets it back, they'll have a full round robin. Um, so Stella had already done the border of winter, and I did the little Christmas tree. So yeah, and then when Coral gets this, she'll do autumn, obviously, which is a tree with a squirrel in it. Um, yeah, tree with a squirrel in it and a leafy, bo leafy border. And she'll obviously do the background and backstitching on this one. So, how cute is that? I'm happy with it. I think it's cute. The sad thing about round robins is, I'm going to put this in the mail, um, I think on the 1st of April, which is my birthday. Um, I'll be putting this in the mail. It'll be sent away to someone who I don't really know, and it'll go back home to its owner, and I'll never get to see it finished, and it's so sad. <laughs> Because I would love to see this finished, you know, it's not something I'd hang on my wall, but I would really love to see the finished product. It's going to be nice. It's really going to be nice. So yeah, that was my... I spent a lot of time on this. Actually, I spent a lot of days on this, but because I would come home from work, I'd stitch on it for one hour, and then I'd be too tired to continue, so I'd put it away. And the border just took me so long, just days and days. But it does look cute. It was worth the effort, and it's really nice. So that's Stella's round robin. Next month I should get Coral's round robin, which is a picture of a bird. And I'll be finishing that, so I will get to see that one finished. And then um, in May, mine should come back to me. So that's pretty good. I'm happy. Uh, so, round robin, round robin, round robin. Uh, schwam. I didn't do any more work on that schwam white work piece that I showed you last time. It's really close to finished. It's like two days from finished. I should just pull it out and finish it, but... I might do, but I'm really trying to focus on five of fairies. And let me just, sorry, face in the camera. Um, I'm really, now that I've finished that round robin, I want to focus on this and get this finished. So here is five of fairies. I'm working on the blue fairy at the moment. I got so burnt out on all the metallics last time. I've just decided no more metallics for a while. I'm going to finish off the blue fairy, all the cross, oh, sorry, all the cotton cross stitching. Um, and I want to do that before I rotate to anything else. And it shouldn't take too long, I think. I've done, even today, I've done quite a bit, just in two or three hours of stitching this morning. Um, so yeah, I'll knock that out in a week, maybe, her dress, I hope. Um, and then it'll be kind of close to finished. There's not that much more metallic to do. There's a, there's a thousand or so beads to go on this. Um, but yeah, when the beads are done, it's finished. I can't wash it because of the bleach. I'm scared that there is some bleach in the fabric and when I get it wet it'll come out and all of these uh, colours that are on the bleach will actually get bleached out. I do not want that to happen. So I love this. I'm back in love with it again. I was hating it when I was stitching on it a few weeks ago because I just got so burnt out on all the metallics. I love it. So that's what I'll be focusing on mostly for a while yet. Um, and that's all I've touched this month. Really? Yeah, it is. That's all I've touched. Um, it's sad, right? Not much progress. Uh, oh, on the 5th 
I actually did do full coverage on the 5th and I did a little bit on Game of Nouveau. It's only 400 stitches, so I wasn't going to... I think I will show you though. Because I can reach it, it's right here. Ugh. There we go. There's Game of Nouveau. And I just did everything... Well, so that was the bottom of the page before, so I did all of this bit. Not much. That's the problem when you only stitch on it for one day, there just isn't much to show. Um, yeah. I really like this. I can't wait to have this finished. I've seen, um, someone, Nikki, is it Nikki? Um, someone is like halfway down the whole pattern and it looks amazing. I really like it. I can't wait to get it done. I, oh, I want to spend all my time doing that, but I also want to finish Firefly Fairies. I also want to participate in Round Robins. I also want to do just everything. Ugh, it's crazy. So something else I did was tea dyeing. Um, see this? Look at that. This is a little scrap piece of Ada I have. And I was thinking about it and I heard people talking about tea dyeing linens and Adas and coffee dyeing as well. Um, and so I went to Aldi and bought really cheap tea and coffee and I thought I'm going to try it. Um, so this one was my first attempt. It was tea dyed first. I made it really strong with like 12 tea bags and um, left it in there for about three hours. And when it came out, it was really orange. Yeah, the color's showing up pretty good. It's not so orange now because what I did was, after it went in the tea, I rinsed it and rinsed it and rinsed it, but it was still orange. And then I actually put it in the coffee, um, which I, I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do, but I think there's kind of no rules. So <laughs> I did put it in the coffee and that did dull down the orange of it um, but you can see the coffee kind of left marks on it like oh, sorry can you see this sort of discoloration here and there's a few dots in other places on the other side and stuff um but yeah i i'm actually really happy with it i really like it it's nice i would definitely stitch something on this this is ada this was just a test piece i think maybe today but pretty soon i will actually stick a piece of linen in coffee because I'll be interested to see what color the coffee maybe I should do Ada and linen as a control to see what the difference is in Ada and linen um yeah I'd like to see what color coffee does I'd like to work with some combinations I hope that you can do other things like um green tea does like a nice champagne color um you can do beetroot you can do avocado skins uh a lot of other natural things oh I can't think what else Anyway, if I do any more experiments, I'll let you know what I used and how it turned out. I'm pretty happy with this. I have no idea what I'll use it for. Maybe. Oh my... Oh, this wouldn't be big enough. I was thinking the field in which I grow my... fucks. Lay thine eyes upon it and see that it is barren. I don't think this is big enough for that though, unfortunately. Um, yeah, but that would be good for that kind of thing. Anyway, I was pretty happy with that experiment. That was a few weeks ago I did that. I've been meaning to show you for such a long time. Um, so let's get on to the shopping. I did so much shopping. A lot of this stuff came, um, I ordered it back in January and it's only just come or it came in the month that I haven't made a video. Um, so what should I start with? I'll, I'll start with the most fun thing. This isn't shopping. Sorry, face in the camera. This isn't actually shopping. I didn't pay for this. Um, I was at my mum's house and I was like, Mum, I think you've got some of my cottons. And she did. I lent her some cottons for, for a quilting thing. She did. Um, and I was looking through all her threads. And she's like, you know, I don't stitch anymore. She doesn't. So you can just take, you know, whatever you want there. I'm like, really? Are you kidding? She's like, yeah, just take it. I'm like, oh, okay. And, um, you know, I can't just take stuff from her. Unless there's a particular project in mind I want to do. She has so much stash and she just doesn't even stitch anymore. She's got amazing stuff. She, a lot of like reproduction antique stuff. A lot of shepherd's bush kind of stuff. Um, but she... <laughs> I did say, listen mom, I'll take this from you. And I'll show it in my floss tube video. And I might just forget to give it back because these are really cool. This is the entire range of silk. This is all silk um, from... Cascade House, which is an Australian hand-dyed uh, company, and there are silks, and some of them are variegated, as you can see. There's 220-something here. I think it's every silk they make. 
and they're so gorgeous so lush it's so pretty it's such a shame nothing is actually charted for cascade house so i'll have to like find a pattern and do some matching so i can use these oh i love this color my god they're gorgeous aren't they i love these i'm so happy i'm so excited that oh mom's just like yeah you can have it <laughs> like this must be hundreds of dollars of silk right i think cascade house silks aren't that expensive like about 250 each 450 each maybe which is pretty cheap for silk it's 8.4 yards yeah so there's 200 silks there mum just gave them to me she's like yeah you can have them i'm not gonna use them so yeah that's pretty fun <laughs> i love that um i got some fat uh yeah i'll do the fabrics i ordered some fabrics online um silk weaver did one of their um flash sales I guess it is sort of thing on their Facebook page uh, and people say that's the only way you can get good service from Silk Weaver because the fabrics they're selling actual pieces that they already have dyed um, and they're just like they're not too expensive you don't have to wait ages for them to dye it and send it to you which is everybody's complaint about Silk Weaver I never used to have a problem when I ordered from Silk Weaver about 10 years ago I don't know not that I remember at least um, but silk weaver fabrics are the nicest they really are i shouldn't say that i haven't even seen i haven't had a piece of fabric from hand up by stephanie or picture plus or any of the new dyes um so anyway i'll show you the ones i got i got four pieces from their flash sale um they were pretty reasonably priced they're nice big pieces so this one is a 36 count opalescent Edinburgh linen in illusion the color is illusion oh yeah and the color looks great on the camera there that's exactly the color it is like gray with subtle greeny bits really really gorgeous I love this and it's opalescent um, which I don't usually like in linens it's so pretty oh I could use this for nightmare couldn't I I do have nightmare in my um in my to-do list so yeah yeah I love that nice big piece too this is Wexford linen I don't know what Wexford is I've never heard of it um, but it's very even it doesn't look slubby at all no slubs oh there is a little bit see that that there um, but it's pretty even it's very nice it looks almost like Lugana um, it's very nice nice and flexy um, it's 32 count this color is called Carol's Meadow and it's huge yeah, greeny, pinky colours. It looks like this in real life. You're seeing pretty good colours. It's a bit more washed out in the video, I think. Uh, yeah, very nice. Oh, it looks washed out in the video because there's a big white patch there. This side of the linen is actually better. A bit less white. There we go, that's better. Okay. Uh, the next colour is... What, also Wexford, ugh, Wexford linen, 32 count. Uh, the colour is Winter Blizzard, and it's sort of purple and white. It's really nice. I like it a lot. I'm really wondering if a Mirabilia I'm considering will fit on this. It might be too narrow for a Mirabilia, but I will be measuring and figuring that out because it's so pretty. Um, I like these. They're sort of subtle variegations, not big you know clashing colors and huge dark bits next to light bits and stuff this one is Wexford linen again 32 count iris garden and it's blue and green it's pretty right this would be nice for a mermaid maybe if I ever decide to do a mermaid I like the bottom part better hmm yeah so that's my silk weaver fabric but that's just the beginning I have 12 more pieces of fabric to show you hand dyed fabric I did some shopping guys this was all in February I bought all of this or January I think I paid for it yeah I think it all is from January <laughs> okay so see this look at that these are all small pieces this is all from a shop called XJU Designs XJU Designs on Etsy I'll put the I'll put this little text up with the link and it'll there'll be a link in the doobly do as well 
and they're really nice and you get the fabric and it's like all so uh, let me wrap it back up I see I unwrapped all of these so you can see them they're all wrapped like that with a little tag on so you know what your fabric is and stuff it's nice they're gorgeous colors I'm in love with them I'm gonna buy more from them and I'll talk about that in a minute so the first one is 40 count linen in Rocky Mountain and it looks like this it's great isn't it so good I love this variegation it's really nice um, next one there are two colors in here that I'm in love with and this is one of them this is 40 count in Tiger Lily look at that the color is so vibrant it's so solid and thick it looks like it's painted it's gorgeous I'm in love with this both sides perfect oh I love this I love this I can't even get over it so good really I mean the color you're seeing is absolutely true it's so nice really great yellowy green um, that's called tiger lily I'd like to get a bigger piece of that don't know what for I don't know no, no idea what I'll stitch on it but I really like it uh, this one is called uh oh uh, this one's called Red River 40 count again and there it is it's great it's like a um, clay red like looks like the Indian red if you use watercolor paints it looks like Indian red it's very clay it looks redder in the camera than it is in real life it's kind of a bit more orange oh there you go that's better yeah it's a good color don't know what I'll do with it again all of these I don't have a use for except one which I'll talk about at the end but I don't think I will end up using it for that this one is 40 count Hungarian pointer and it looks like this and this was the first fabric I saw and in the photos it actually looks a lot um, browner, not orange, a lot darker brown. Um, so I'm not in love with it actually, I'm a bit disappointed, but it's the only kind of disappointment I have. They're all small pieces, um, I thought I'd like, they're good for smalls, for small pieces, um, and I'd like to see a, a range of colours by buying the small pieces and then if I like one colour in particular I can order that, um, you know, in a custom cut in size, so that's my plan. 40 count lamb's wool. These are all linens so far. Ta this is a nice neutral, really good neutral colour. I love this. It's only a small piece though. Yeah, I, um, hang on, this is, oh, the measurement isn't on here. I think some of them are like 9 by 13 and some of them are even a little bit smaller. Uh, the next one, ah, oh, this is 39 count sunshine yellow Miran. So it's kind of, it's linen, it looks exactly like linen, but it's super stiff. It's like you can bend it. It's really, it's really stiff. Um, kind of like that witch elt linen you get, that's very stiff. Um, Miran, it's a bit see-through too, so you're not seeing how yellow it is. It's good color. It's nice. There we go. Um, yeah, so that's 39 count. So I don't know what the deal with that is. Uh, next is willow green 36 count linen great color so pretty uh, the color you're seeing is it looks a little bluer on the screen than what it is in real life there we go that's better there we go so nice that's a good versatile color I think don't know what I'll do on it yet of course it's a good color Next is 36 count stone. That's a good color too. I would like to. I was thinking I wanted to stitch the Rose of Sharon by Mirabilia um, over one. 36 count might be a little small for over one, but I think she'd fit on this for 36 count. Um, yeah, I like it. It's a nice color. I think she'd be better on a 30, 28 count actually. That would probably be best. Uh, next is 36 count rosewood. Rosewood. Not rosewood nana, just rosewood. See, this is a bigger piece. Is that 16 inches maybe? I don't know. Oh, you can actually... I didn't even notice that in real life. Yeah, there are actually kind of pinky splotches. See, pinky bits here and here. It's a really nice colour. Nice neutral. Again, I like my neutrals. I could do... Ooh, ooh, I'm having plans actually. That's
that's good I've got some ideas um, this one is 36 count coffee linen this is a big piece yeah so this actually looked a lot darker in the photo uh, and, but I still really like the way it, the way it is it's lighter than I was expecting but it's still good it's great I don't know what I'll do on this <laughs> nice big piece though 36 count hmm. nice big piece I can do something good on that these these are so gorgeous look at that I highly recommend buying from this shop they're really nice linen, really friendly, really helpful, so good. This is 32 count Belfast in the colour Deep Sea. There's going to be a lot of people who like this one. Look at that. I want to hold it in front of me so you can see how nice it is. Like, yeah, it's gorgeous. It's so vibrantly blue. It's amazing. It's really good. Love it. Love it. Also, oh, I've got hair on my mouth. I also don't know what I'll use this for. It's 32 count. So I could do like a mirror on it, couldn't I? So pretty, so pretty, I love it. This color is like a very creamy color. It's really nice, so pretty. And it's subtle, like it looks looks um, contrasting on the camera, but it's very subtle, it's really nice. Love this one. Um, this is 32 count, I've lost the tag. No, no, there it is. 32 count gin, uh, ginger Belfast linen that's ginger not really in love with that but it'll be useful for something it's um this is opalescent as well none of the other ones from XJU have been opalescent this is the only opalescent I got I'm not a massive fan of opalescent linen I think it often um overwhelms what you're stitching on it so I want the design to stand out not the fabric not always sometimes opalescent's great but yeah you can't really see there we go nice sparkles on that maybe I should have put all the fabrics up close that's that one and last but not least this is my favorite this is my favorite color of fabric that I've ever seen um, it's called it's 32 count even weave Murano uh, it's called deep Bordeaux. oh no it's not showing up so well in the picture in the camera let me see Oh, it looks so pinky to you. It's really, like, see how dark you see it there? It's a bit darker than what you see here. It's great. It's like the perfect, see this? It's darker than this. What you see in the camera is a little bit lighter than what it is. It's a perfect, it's a real red, red. It's gorgeous, right? So nice. I'm in love with this. I, so this is big enough to stitch, death by cross stitch, if I did it over one um, and when I bought this I was super happy look I've even got a hank of natural silk that would work I'm in love with this combination when I bought it I thought totally this is my death by cross stitch this is what I'm gonna do I'm so happy but I'm having second thoughts now I went to the Canberra cross stitches stitch in whatever it's called chat and stitch stitch and bitch um, and there was someone there stitching it and she was doing it over two on 36 count and it looked gorgeous of course um her fabric was amazing i might ask her what it is it looked amazing um but as she rightly points as i noticed when i saw hers there's actually a lot of backstitch in it and i don't know about you guys but sometimes when i do backstitch over one you don't see it really well i mean the silk the silk will be a little bit finer than cotton yeah, but I still think you'd lose a bit of the fine detail by doing it over one on 32 count. So I think I'm going to ask for another piece of this in 36 or 40 count, big enough so I can do it over two. Have you heard of that 40 count even weave called Ver Verdal? I think it's V-E-R-D-A-L, Verdal. 40 count Verdal and it's even weave. 40 count, whoa. I wonder if she'd dye that for me. Is it she or he? The owner of the shop is called Jukus, J-U-C-U-S. <laughs> That's how they sign off their messages. Um, but, and I looked up the name and it said it can be a, um, like a nickname of Julia. So I think it might be a she, but I'm really not sure. I'm trying to get a better color. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm gonna ask if she can get the Verdal even weave, because 
I like even weave. Um, but if she can't, I'll totally take linen. 40 count linen, 36 count linen, and I'll use this. Death by cross stitch. Yeah! Next year though. I will not start this year. I'm thinking I'm going to wait a few months before I ask for the new fabric. Um, precisely because I don't want to start it and I have no discipline and I probably will and, you know, I'm terrible. Okay. More stash. <laughs> More stash. So, my camera cut off, sorry. Um, yeah, in the old days you used to say, you used to call stash acquisition, it was like S-E-X, and it's the verb. Stash enhancement experience. Um, and that's your shopping trip. Anyway, I've got some needle minders, yay. Um, and I got these needle minders because I needed a gift for my friend Tara and my, and my mum. <laughs> sorry, I dropped them. And my mum. My mum's birthday is coming up. I've got an order coming from 123 Stitch with all my presents in it. Um, even though she doesn't stitch, she still likes the stitching things and asked me to buy her some. So I did. Um, I'm going to give her one of these little doves. Let me move them closer. Nope, not that close. They're really nice. Um, I got three because they were cheap. I can give one to... There, that's better. Yeah, so I might give one to mum and keep the other two for myself. Rainbow Bride is for me because I like Rainbow Bride. <laughs> Um, these two are for me, this mushroom, <laughs> uh, that's to go on my Game of Nouveau, and, cause I just like Mario, uh, this elephant, how cute is that, really pretty, right? Uh, yeah, elephant's my favourite animal, so there we go. Never stitched an elephant though, I've never even seen an elephant pattern that I like enough to stitch, um, that's nice though. Uh, next is, right, this is the one I got for Tara, and if you've seen the Lord of the Rings, this is the, I guess it's like a brooch that Galadriel gives to Frodo, um, it's really nice. She also had an even star, which is the necklace that Arwen wears, um, I couldn't decide which one to get, so I got this one, I'll probably end up getting an even star too. Uh, this is for Tara, well it was for Tara, I think I'm going to keep it because I like it so much, no I'm kidding, <laughs> I am going to give it to Tara. Tara, this is yours! It's big, right? It's big. And I think it'll go okay on, on the... So Tara's two whips at the moment are um, the Peacock Sampler by Teresa Wensler. No, English Garden Sampler it's called. And she's also just started Celtic Autumn. Um, she started that when I was there the other weekend. It was so good. <laughs> it's really gorgeous. And she's stitching so quickly. Um, yeah, so this will be helpful for you, I hope. They're nice on the back. There. Ooh! <laughs> I usually don't like it when they put things on the back, but these are kind of flat. I mean, they're not flat, they're concave, but but my needle's not going to slide off them, so that's good. That's all right. Um, and the pooping unicorn pooping rainbows is for me, because I'm weird, and I think that's cool. I dropped again. These are the free this is a freebie she sent me. Oh, this Etsy shop is Needle Attractions, obviously. There's the shop name there. Yeah, some bunnies. I don't know, I'll give them to my niece when she starts stitching. So they're my needle minders, yay, they're always fun. Um, right, and now I'm going to show you more shopping I did. Excuse me, face in the camera again. Hi. Oh, okay. Um, so someone on Facebook started up a group to sell all her stuff. I think she said she used to own a shop and the shop closed down and now she's selling all her old stock. Um, so I bought some stock from her. Uh, she was selling six of the Nora Corbett letters for six dollars each. That's super cheap, right? So I got F, I, P, X, Y, and Z. Weird letters, but I love them and I think I might stitch them all one day. I should have done it like that so you could see them. Um, and then she wrote back a few weeks later, after I'd already received these, and said, oh, she found three more, do I want them? And I was like, oh, you know, postage, that's the problem. I'll have to pay more postage to get them over here, it would have been fine if they all came in the same package. And then she said, oh, she wants $9 for them, $9 each for them, instead of six, don't know why. Um, and uh, they're, when they go on sale on one, two, three, six, they're $9. 30 or something so I was like no I'm fine thanks I'll skip them um, she sent me a little freebie um, I hope you can't read the pattern cute is the snow lady so they're nice 
I don't know people with those letters for their names, but I'd really like to stitch the whole alphabet one day. Is that crazy? I think it's a bit crazy. Um, then I went to the show up in Sydney last weekend, the weekend before. It's been a long week, guys. I can't remember. Um, I stayed with my friend Tara. Um, we went to the show together. It was called like Craft Alive or something. It was at Rose Hill and it was a total waste of entry. I looked online and they said there were going to be, there was going to be Stitch About and Stitch something and like four shops called Stitch and I was like, okay, that's good. And then I went there and there was one stitching, one cross stitch place. And apparently there's some controversy about the entry price being too high for the venue and a lot of shopkeepers won't, won't go to that show because there's just not enough audience foot traffic for them. So it was a total waste of time. It was a complete waste of my $20 entry fee. And I, you know what? I'm actually pissed because they said there was going to be more shops there and they weren't. It's like false advertising, right? I drove all the way to Sydney for that. <laughs> But I did get something I like. Um, the shop that was there was called Oz Stitch. Yeah. Um, and they had, they mainly just had um, Riolis and Lenate kits. Or Lenart. I don't know how you say it. There's no accent on the E, so it must be Lenart. Um, but I, they had this kit. Um, it was a display model. And my god, it was so beautiful. It was so gorgeous. It is. Don't look at the price. It's called Lady with the Fan. It's based on artwork by Gustav Klimt, as you can probably tell by the style. There were a couple of Klimt's there on display. There was um, The Kiss. There was, yeah, just The Kiss. Um, and there was Starry Night by Van Gogh. But this one was just, just stood out as so much more beautiful. And so I bought the kit. It was really expensive, but I had to buy something. I couldn't go there and not buy something. So, see the, the, Fibers. They're they're called they're not actually stranded cotton. It's called wool acrylic blend, and I think you can see there. They they're like wool. You can see they're fuzzy. I'm worried that when I stitch, the fuzz will like look messy. Like it'll get caught if I stitch the red. Then I stitch white next to it. The bits of red fuzz will get stuck to the white, right? And it'll look messy. So I'm hoping that with thread heaven, it'll be okay. I don't know. We'll see. It's interesting. Um, but it's gorgeous. I can't wait to stitch it. For $70, alright guys? $70 Australian. Crazy. Ridiculous, really. But I don't care. I love it. And I want to start it yesterday. Um, I also got the Realist catalogue, which is super nice. Look how big it is. God, Realist has some amazing stuff. I mean, I'll do a little quick flick like this. You can't see much, but there you go. Yeah, okay, that's it. Um, I'm not gonna do a flick through of this, don't even ask. If you want to see it, go onto the Realers website. That's the shop that I got it from, Odd Stitch. Um, and they also included a little freebie kit. This is also Realers, obviously. It's a kit with all the stuff in it. I don't like it, but it was free, so whatever. My niece can stitch it when she learns to stitch. Um, so, I had a nice time with Tara. I had a boring time at the show. You know, at the show, there were three shops that were selling those diamond paintings. You know, the ones where you stick the little resin diamonds to the page? And there are some people, there's a whole group of Heaven and Earth diamond painting on Facebook. If you haven't checked it out, have a look. And they're doing Heaven and Earth designs by sticking gems on paper, not cross stitch, gems on paper. And then you stick it on the wall and it looks all sparkly and it's pretty. Um, you can get the kits on AliExpress and eBay for like $10 and they were selling the same size kind of kit at the shows here for the cheapest kit I saw was $40. Crazy. I mean, so expensive. There was one whole shop that was just dedicated to the diamond kits. Uh, yeah, amazing. Um, but I didn't buy any of that because I knew they were cheaper online. I didn't see one I loved. So, so there. Um, I then went to... Yeah, so I was so disappointed by my experience at the show, I decided to stop at Victoria House on the way back, and I spent a hundred bucks there. <laughs> and I got some good stuff. Um, so a few years ago, my mom went to Victoria House and bought me this, and it's a kit to make this little strawberry thing. And I did finish it when she got it for me. There it is. I haven't made it up yet, but see the gold beads? So pretty. And queen stitches. 
queen stitches they're everywhere the bane of my life um yeah so i did this one years ago she bought it for ten dollars but when i was there this time i got all of these for five dollars each this one this one this one this is nice and oh yeah that's by the same company they were all five dollars each and they're all kits guys all kits with beads and needles and everything so oh they don't all have beads it's got sequins yeah so yeah they're nice they were five dollars each that's oh, i'm really happy um then i also got two mirabilias for ten dollars each i got this one i don't love it but um it was ten bucks might do it in a giveaway at some point. It's called Blushing Bride. It's MD18. I don't know if... I think this one might be out of print. It was $10 and I think she had a few copies there. And she had about eight copies of this one there. And I know this one's out of print. And it was $10. Elizabeth in the Lavender Sky. And I actually do really like this one. Um, this is MD10. Yeah, Elizabeth in the Lavender Sky. And yeah, I love it. I, I really like this one actually. The more I think about it, the more I like it. Maybe this is the one I'll start. Payday is on Wednesday and I have a one, two, three stitch cart full of stuff that's kidding up. At the moment it's kidding up two mirrors, but I might increase it to four. I <laughs> oh, I'm so indecisive on the mirror thing at the moment. I think I just need to start one. That's the only way I'm going to stop spending money. But I'm not going to start one until I finish Five Fly Fairies. <laughs> And I might start the one that, that happens at the retreat, or I might take one to the retreat to start it. And the retreat isn't until May 5th and 6th or something like that. Um, anyway, I've got more at... What else? Oh, I got a few um, gentle art threads. And wig style works threads at, um, at Victoria House. I also got this for $5. It's a black work mermaid. Pretty right. I like it. That was five dollars. Pretty good. And last but not least was the Drawn Thread Little Learning Band, the Acon Sampler. So it's a small um, band sampler. It's a kit. It's got threads. It's got beads. Linen. God, it's big linen. Like 28 count. I don't know. And the chart. Look at the original price. $72.50 for that much thread and the linen and like a few beads. There's like 100 beads. $72. I got it half price. I got it for $36. Which is still expensive I think but I like the drawn thread. I was, I picked up the chart. I was going to get the chart. Um, the chart was $20. It was like, what? $20? So I ended up getting this one because it, it's relatively, it was a bargain. So yeah, I like this and I want to do it soon. My grandma has been talking to me about the drawn thread, which is so weird. I didn't, I like, did she know it was my favorite? I don't know. Um, when I was organizing this room yesterday, I was looking through all my charts and I have like 22 drawn thread charts in there that I haven't stitched yet. <sighs> I really, really am feeling a drawn thread start coming pretty soon. Um, I need to get something up. I just, it's, I'm just, I'm itching to start one. <laughs> oh, love it. Love it all. Um, face in the camera again. I apologize. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to show you. And that's good because I think this is like a 45 minute video. Oh, plus the, the bit where I showed you the room. So maybe, yeah, we're approaching an hour. So I'm sorry. That's, that's all. Um.